I'm here at HPE Discover in Las Vegas with Ignacio, and 5G seems to be popping up all over the show. And I'm curious, why is HPE so interested in 5G? So 5G, I would say, has four pillars of interest for HPE. One of them, of course, is the infrastructure from the edge to the data center. We provide different solutions, and traditionally we are a big vendor there. Now, um, we also have a legacy of OSS and BSS solutions, which are you know telco data center solutions that we bring from the past, and we are adapting uh, into the uh, 5G world. The third pillar would be definitely all the Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi has been uh, living together happily with 4G, and we anticipate the same will happen with 5G. There's the whole Aruba team working on, on that adaptation, and fourth would be Green Lake, which is those consumption-based models that really feed very well into the uh, deployment of 5G for very good reasons. Let's let's drill down on that one a little bit because uh, I, I understand that ultimately 5G is is really expensive to roll out, but maybe Green Lake makes it easier. So. The discussions we're having with, with the operators uh, are basically around how do we justify spending a trillion dollars to deploy 5G so that we can download films in five seconds. Are we going to pay more for that? Not really. So uh, how do we facilitate something else, something cheaper, something smaller to get started? And most of the operators they brought uh, us in first were thinking of bringing enterprise solutions that are already working with HP into the 5G world. So we can think of smaller deployments of 5G for enterprise, uh, in which the operator gets the chance to start small, fail relatively fast, but or not even fail, hopefully you know, keep on making money out of the enterprises while they become familiar with 5G, with operating that. Also, um, you know, uh, HP can facilitate those deployments by financing them and uh, enabling those consumption-based models with, with GreenLake because it's it's key to be ready to deploy easy and small but be ready to uh, scale very very fast and at an unknown moment uh, so shipping you know giving you the experience of the hyperscalers of the Amazons of the world uh, in an in on-prem uh, solution because this has solutions have to be on prem um, is is basic to engage into those paid POCs proof of concept uh, for 5G. So so why is it more interesting to approach this from a enterprise build out versus you know like the 200 and however many million people that are in in the U.S. that all have cell phones? So the trick is that nobody knows who's going to make money and how. All those startups creating those great solutions about gaming and VR and healthcare and smart cities and all that are great, but nobody knows who will succeed. What we offer is an easy, cheap path to get started, small and then grow fast if as needed. Uh, so fail, fail early, fail fast, fail cheaply, or su better, succeed cheaply, succeed uh, at some point. Okay, testing those those uh, little solutions. So maybe we'll see, uh, you know, deployments here and there, but not all of the 5G networks will be connected with each other across the entire U.S. Probably not. Or, okay. or and I don't even mean the U.S. specifically, or, no, or the world. The world. Right? Yeah, definitely. Probably not. But you know, we will hit, begin to see you know, those mushrooms appearing here and there, and they will populate more and more. The, the whole network of the country till we have a full coverage and suddenly the operators find themselves with okay we built so many of these 5G small deployments while we are getting paid we are we are building revenues we are building margins healthy margins out of this and suddenly it's easy for us or relatively easy for us to scale uh, and give more and more services rapidly in a virtuous circle ideally so why is 5G different in this regard because that's not really the way that either 3G or 4G were rolled out. So, so many people think that you know 5G is just you know 4G on asteroids or 3G on asteroids, whatever. It's not the case at all. There's a fundamental difference in the way it's being defined, in which it involves, it, it almost requires uh, the deployment of compute close to the edge. Due to the 
uh, changes in the definition of the control plane of 5G. So you put compute close to the edge, and now the next question is, what do we do with it? We can do the control, fine, we can do rerun, we can do those things. Can we do something else? Why not? So what is that something else? Enterprise use cases, other use cases for consumers. Now, starting with enterprise use cases, cheaper and smaller, probably yes. You don't know which ones will succeed. Eventually, it's just a, a, a kind of load that runs on the on the computer. So, in the end, the operators uh, turn themselves into a kind of distributed cloud, which you can think competes with the centralized cloud of the hyperscalers, but has other features like, you know, uh, lower latencies, resiliency. Locality is closer to the customer. It's local, and in some cases, particularly out of the U.S., it can be it can be relevant. So the that fundamental change in the definition of 5G changes the whole uh, perspective on the economics and the use cases of, of 5G. So that kind of raises the question: Then uh, why not? like Amazon or Microsoft or, or Google or somebody who already has a massive cloud mm -hmm. footprint doing this instead of the carriers? So, in fact, they are doing it. So, several of, of those hyperscalers are already working with operators and with ourselves, and it's something we promote, to deploy their infrastructures close to the edge or on the edge. It makes sense. It's, it's a use case that really makes sense. It, we have even a public reference uh, back in Europe, in Telefonica. Now, is it the only business model? Probably not. There are certain uh, applications which might not need those vertical stacks of software deployment, which are, which are so great, provided by the hyperscalers. They, meet, they may do the developments themselves. It's fine. Uh, and in those other business models, the expectation of the operators is that they capture not only more revenue, but also more margin because they de-intermediate uh, the, the whole business model. Now, there's also another aspect that we have to take into account, which is that you know, the movement to the edge somehow kills all the synergies uh, or some of the synergies of the extremely centralized model of, the, of today's cloud or today's public cloud. It's, it's way more difficult to service servers that are in remote places. You actually have to send someone, it's costly. So in the end, the edge is a uh, less uh, cost-effective uh, place to place a cloud. Yeah, definitely. Now, our, our reasoning is, as the operators are by default distributed, and you have to have the distributed cloud anyway, so try to make money out of it. For the operator, for the service providers, for the hyperscalers, it might not be so effective. Uh, it might be just another source, but there are all sorts of uh, business models in between that could work, and we are working to enable both, definitely. That's fascinating. Thanks, Ignatia. Thank you very much.